HRL Laboratories has published a new paper in Nature Magazine entitled Universal Logic with Encoded Spin Qubits in Silicon. So in this demonstration, what we did is we have these baths of electrons and we pulled six of those electrons in from these big reservoirs of electrons, trapped all of them, tightly confined right where we wanted them. And then we applied a bunch of voltage pulses to first initialize a quantum state on each end of this array of electrons. And then we applied about 30 more pulses to get those two qubits to interact, created an entanglement, and then we applied thousands of pulses still in maintaining that entanglement all the while. And we did all of this in less than one ten thousandth of a second. I think the major feature of this result is that we were able to entangle two different encoded qubits. You know, that's what we call them. We're not just treating every individual electron as a, as a uh, qubit, and we're actually encoding that information into three spins altogether. And then to entangle, you know, two sets of those three spins, we now have to operate in a much larger Hilbert space. And that means that we have to navigate, really nail down the control. The potential sources of error just at a fundamental level are very large. And so we have to make sure that we've um, carefully calibrated everything and that we have good high performing devices that we've kind of checked every box that we can. I think of it kind of like a line dance. We have these six electrons, they're in a line, they have a spin, which is a sort of orientation, and then there's choreography. And that choreography is provided by our mathematical programming and our electronics. And those give instructions to these electrons to do this little dance where they hold hands and twirl and swap places. So that's kind of intuitive, but then it gets a little tricky because as they twirl and dance, they have this subtle quantum mechanical phase about them that changes something hidden and subtle about their character, and in particular, the relationship between the dancers. And so if I push this analogy probably a little bit too far, as the dancers dance and twirl and swap places, they kind of become one another and, and swap around, but in a very mathematically precise way. I, that's at least how I like to think of it. Of course, what the choreography does is it makes sure that at the end of this very complex dance, all of the dancers line up at the end exactly where they started. And what the demo really asks is, in that whole process, how often did they trip and fall or, 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 or lose the, the, the rhythm of the, of the music, which is what we would call error or decoherence. The team that went into making these results happen is really a collection of very talented scientists. So there's the control software team, the fabrication and epitaxy team, there's the theory and modeling teams, and of course the measurement team that I work with. There were tons of measurements of many of d these devices to understand the internal physics and to know how to properly control them accurately enough to perform this neat demonstration. Uh, really some of the smartest scientists that I've had the pleasure of working with.